We've seen that if we meet a finite number of times and each time play the prisoner's dilemma, that's not enough to induce us to cooperate because the logic of subgame perfection unravels the idea of cooperation from the bottom of the game up. Each time we meet, we'll end up not cooperating in the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. But what if the game was infinitely repeated? Or more realistically, what if each time that we meet, there's a certain probability we will meet again. So the game never has an end. Each time we meet, we know there's a good chance we'll meet again. In that case, we can't use the usual method of solving for the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium from the bottom up, because there is no bottom to the game. There is no final time that we meet. And in that case, subgame perfection means that in every subgame of the big game, in other words, every time we meet, we play a Nash equilibrium. But every subgame of this game is exactly like the original game. We're meeting to play a prisoner's dilemma, and we know there's a chance we'll meet again to play that game once more. So all we have to do now is look for Nash equilibrium of this game to find the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. So could non-cooperation throughout the game be a Nash equilibrium outcome. Well, suppose that I play the strategy, I will never cooperate. And you play the strategy, you'll never cooperate. Are we best responding to each other? Well, given that I know you're never going to cooperate, it's never in my interest to cooperate. So I am, in fact, best responding by never cooperating. And similarly, you're best responding given that you know I will never cooperate. So non-cooperation in this infinitely repeated prisoner's dilemma is still a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. But could there be other subgame perfect Nash equilibria where we end up cooperating? Well, think about the following strategy. Suppose my strategy is I will cooperate the first time. And I will keep cooperating each time if you have never not cooperated. But if you don't cooperate at some point, I'll play not cooperate from then on. So in this case, I'm starting by cooperating, and I'm saying I'll keep cooperating unless I observe you not cooperating, in which case I'll never cooperate with you again. Could it be a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium for both of us to play that strategy? Well, the first time we meet, you know I'm going to cooperate. You know that you could get a higher payoff that first time we meet by not cooperating. But you also know that that has a cost. We'll never cooperate again, and you'll be stuck in this non-cooperative equilibrium from then on each time that we meet. So while you could get a temporary boost in your payoff, you're giving up the possibility of getting a higher payoff from then on. And if the probability of us meeting is sufficiently high, then the one-time boost in your payoff is not enough to offset the future losses from non-cooperation. So if the probability of us meeting again is sufficiently high, then you would in fact be best responding by playing the very same strategy. And the outcome would be that we're always going to cooperate. So we now have a subgame perfect equilibrium where we're always cooperating. And it's induced by what we call a trigger strategy. A trigger strategy is a strategy where we begin with cooperation, but then an act of non-cooperation triggers non-cooperation by me. So here, this is a particularly harsh form of a trigger strategy. It says, one time observing you not cooperating means I will never cooperate again. So it's a very harsh kind of trigger strategy but it certainly could induce us to cooperate if both of us play that strategy, and that would be an equilibrium outcome. 
but there are less harsh trigger strategies we could think of as well. And the most famous of those is called the tit for tat strategy. The tit for tat strategy says, I will cooperate the first time. And from then on, I'll do what you did the last time we met. So I'll start by cooperating. If you cooperate as well, the next time I'll cooperate again. But if I see you not cooperating, then I won't cooperate the next time. If you at some point start cooperating again, then the next time we meet, I'll cooperate once more. So here, my non-cooperation is again triggered by you not cooperating. But it's less harsh in the sense that there's a way for you to recover cooperation if you ever don't cooperate. So could this tit-for-tat strategy be a Nash equilibrium, a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, if both of us played that strategy? Well, the first time we meet, you know I'm going to cooperate which means you know you could get a boost to your payoff if you chose not to cooperate. But that has a cost. We're either never going to cooperate again, in which case you suffer that lower payoff from then on every time we meet, or in order to recover cooperation, you're going to have to cooperate one time when I don't cooperate and suffer that low payoff. So if the probability of us meeting is sufficiently high, that one-time boost isn't going to be worth the cost that you incur later on in the game. And so you would best respond by playing the same strategy. So again, both of us playing the tit-for-tat strategy is a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium as long as the probability of us meeting again is sufficiently high. So now we've seen a way for cooperation to actually emerge in a prisoner's dilemma that's repeatedly played as long as the players never think that there's an end to the game, as long as they always think there's a good probability that they will see each other again.